My Love of Life Energy is a podcast created by Anna Scott. Anna knows that every human being sees life uniquely. In this podcast, she will talk to people and learn from them. These conversations are to shine the brilliance of each human being she speaks to. Join her. After each exploration, you will expand on your insights and see truth and beauty. Welcome, welcome to my podcast, My Love of Life Energy. And this morning, (laughs) I always always do that. I find that when I really, really care about somebody, which I care a lot about a lot of people, is I get so excited that they've agreed to talk with me. And today I have the great, oh God, how do I even say privilege, honor, delight, joy, excitement, be speaking with Fiona Jacob out of, uh, no, the Netherlands, Finland. Where are you? Oh, I'm in a country somewhere. So, Just to confuse it even more, Anna, I'm Irish and living in Sweden. How about that? Okay. <laughs> Body of water somewhere, you know. Uh, and Fee, Fee has been um, my coach, my mentor. She is somebody who I adore and wish worship. Um, I met her through Michael Neal, super coach. And then I've hired her and she is the real deal. So with that, Fee, welcome. Thank you for talking with me. Oh, Anna, it's, you know, (laughs) first of all, when you asked me, I was, you know, when you do one of those movements that goes yippee, kind of like a background (laughs) dance, it's like, ooh, I'm so excited. But, you know, you talk about hiring me, but I think when we choose a coach or when we're in partnership with somebody, the love goes both ways. Mm. It's like, I want to create a space where people step into transformation, step into an even more delicious and joyful life. And I think it's when people recognize that that's what they want for themselves. Then there's no decision to be made or no hiring to be done. That's just practical. It's just in my world, it's come in, the door is open, let's create. Mm. And in that space, that's a space of transformation. So until we're ready, I mean, we could have been having this conversation for 10 years or 10 minutes before, you know, we chose to, to, to work together. And it doesn't matter, but it's just when we're ready, we know. We know when the teacher is right. We know when the partnership is right. We know when the synergy is perfect. So this is my joy. This is my thrill. Mm. I worship every single client I have because we're in a creative process together. It's nothing got to do with me. It's got to do with what we see and what we explore and what we see newly. And there's no greater joy in this life, Anna, than that. See, you, you hold the space. Um, it's not that you hold it. There, there's, that's not the right word. There's something you understand about presence and bringing presence to a conversation. Can you speak to that at all? My initial response was no. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) I know, because the minute you start speaking, I I get it. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, oh, it's going to disappear. How cool. So I think it's a, a, a beautiful question. And I think what comes up for me to say, Anna, is simply this. When I fall out of my crazy thinking mind, and dear God, I have crazy thinking like every single human being on the planet. And I just touch that space of quiet and of still.
the most gorgeous, impactful, knowing, creative <laughs> ideas or thoughts or space opens up for life to unfold perfectly. And that space for me is love, actually, if we were to put a word on it. Hmm. <laughs> so, uh. so presence is simply love. I'm, I'm, you know, some words, one of my most recent mentors, Rudy, talking about it said, it's a mind without judgment. So presence is mm. love. And love is a mind without judgment. And that is just beautifully expansive and infinite. Mm. And the thing is, and I don't know how you see this, but you know when you're there and you know when you're not. And I have nothing on whether we're there or not in one sense. Because the freedom, at least for me, is knowing I can be there. The freedom is being able to be that spider on the web and being able to move back to that. Mm. Being able to move back to presence, stillness. Oh, wow. I find my whole body relaxing as you're speaking. It's funny that, isn't it? Mm. I think presence, love, whatever word people want to use, just nourishes us. <laughs> it's, it's like we put on body cream. We're women, right, of a certain age. <clears throat> Never mind. Um, <laughs> lotions and potions we will use to kind of nourish ourselves. But if we're really looking in this direction and seeing what we see about presence and love and a mind without judgment, that is that nourishes nourishes us very bad Irish accent from within it's a continuous infinite nourishment it's so funny you're you're you I have never heard I mean I've heard it but maybe I haven't heard it the mind without judgment mm. and I was thinking about that just this morning in my meditation I was thinking about why judgment hurts so much. And we're mm. all so afraid of it. Like we don't like it. Yeah. And what occurs to me just right now, what I'm hearing you say, and I'm wondering if this is what you see is like when my mind is without judgment, it's like I fall into that love. Judgment like is reminding it's not that love. Mm. I love what you've seen. Tell me more about that. Cause there's something there that's, that's just, Ooh, I want to dive into. It's beautiful. Well, that's what it, it, I was reflecting on my daughter and, you know, she doesn't like to be judged, nor do I like to be judged. And I was wondering about it. So I was actually kind of like, huh, what is this judgment? But when you said a mind without judgment, it, it occurred to me is I'm wondering if this is what you see is that it's our true nature, which is this love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Our truest nature is a mind without judgment. Our truest nature is presence. Our truest nature is deep listening and curiosity. Mm. Our truest nature is in us in relationship, in the space of love, not in love with one another. Mm but in that space of expansion and sometimes contraction, but a lot of times it's a space of expansion and newness and freshness and insight and creativity. Because if you want to call it the underlying hum of yours and mine and the 7.8 billion people's lives, the background hum constantly, consistently, infinitely, perfectly is love it always has it is and it always will be because that's who we are 
And simply what gets in the way of that is a misunderstanding of, you know, what our thinking in the moment's telling us about life. I mean, if you, yeah. Go no, ahead. go ahead. No, no go I was ahead. thinking, if you think of ego as the sum of all of the thoughts that we've thought, all of the beliefs that we believe, all of the judgments that we make, all of the values and opinions that we hold, as our creative process, but also taking us away from that deeper essence of who we are. Mm. Now, of course, it's how the system works and it's how we show up in the world and it's how we're, we get to experience life. But if we look at the truth of all of those things, they're not and cannot be true because we've created them through the power of thought. Now, what is true about us and true about life before the power of thought or even during our creative thought or after a thought is thought is the deeper essence, the true essence that we are moment to moment, which is love, which is creation, which is ease and grace and common sense and resilience. That is our truest nature. That's the truth of who we are. The rest we've created as a very real reality, or you could say as a very real mirage, depending. You know, the thing about a mirage, and I heard Muji say this the other day, and I loved it. He said, there's no water in a mirage. The same as like there's no substance to thought. Not really. It's simply energy that we feel in our bodies as feelings and emotions. I, I saw it the other day as this. Uh, I saw it like I saw this image of a tennis. Uh, what do you call it? What do you, a tennis? What do you, the thing that's like the net and the two sides? What is that called? A tennis court. Tennis court. And I saw that that on one side is just the regulation formed tennis court. And the net is the moment the energy on the other side comes through and plops over and becomes formed. But what I saw was that the, the tennis court, the other side is this infinite beyond anything we can imagine. Yes. And it's so big. <laughs> yes. But, but isn't but, it interesting that we are so big, so powerful, so creative, and we hold ourselves so small, so, and look, me too, so I'm not going to pretend like this is the Fiona the Angelic walking the earth, by the way. I mean, from time to time, I sit in insecurity, and I say, sit in anxiousness, and I sit, sit in fear, but but when we really touch off that space of love and infinite love and power, the truth of who we are, there is nothing that can harm us. Mm. Now, of course, we're going to do the things we do to keep our body safe. So we're not, again, suggesting that we stand out in front of play with traffic or, you know, whatever we would do around COVID that keeps us unsafe, whatever. But I'm saying emotionally and psychologically, nothing mm. can harm or touch us. Oh God, I just saw the difference. Holy, sh excuse me. I must. <laughs> <really> <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I Irish, just... you can curse anytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, because I, I, I know that I just saw the difference for the first time. Me more. A well, I just saw what you're pointing to is that physically, yep, yeah, somebody can physically hurt the body. It can get cut, it can get broken, it can get stabbed. But the self that we are on that other side of the court can never be hurt, the, the emotional, because it's eternal. Yes. Yes. And I, And even it just made me think about it's not that the judgments hurt us, we feel them because it's thought. But if we really know that we're this um, 
eternal being, we can just let it go through. It has a place, a big enough place to land. Right. Like if I don't know that, I was protecting my little court. Yes. Yes. But I didn't see that I was this eternal, you know, infinite court side that it could land and it's no big deal. Right. And what we forget, and this is so beautiful that you're seeing it because my experience, particularly around resilience, is and and, and again, I'm I'm not going to try and say that things don't happen to us in life because this is not about a spiritual bypass. It's simply to say this, if we really look to the truth of it and the truth of who we are, there is a space or a place, some people might call it consciousness or our nature or our essence, that is completely untouched. And I mean completely untouched by what may have happened to us. And some of that may have been in real life horrible, miserable, um, something we certainly would not want to repeat and certainly something we would want to happen to our loved ones. So I'm not, again, not suggesting that things don't happen. But if we look to the truth of the untouchability, the resilience that we are, the energy that can hold and accept all things mm -hmm. without judgment, without breaking, without needing to be fixed. We're not shattered like glass. We're, we're more like the bamboo tree in that we surely bend and we catch the wind. And sometimes it can strain us a little bit and move us from side to side, but we're not unearthed. We're not broken. We never have been, no matter what's happened to us. And we don't need to be fixed. We, <laughs> I was going to say we need to, but that's not a useful way of saying it. The possibility for every single human being as they wake up to the whole of who they are. Yeah. The, the nature of the human and the human body, but this being, this infallible, untouchable, unstoppable energy of aliveness and life we are life we are you know it's so interesting yes what i just saw when you were talking because i i didn't used to know who i was i didn't i thought i was the one side of this small little place on the tennis court mm -hmm. and what i see is it's like this little tennis court is actually sitting on this infinite but i never saw the infinite below yeah. And yeah, I feel it in the little tennis court, but it falls in and it like it lands in this presence. And no, I'm not explaining it, but I see what you're pointing to. Yeah, you know, and me too. I, like most people will have grown up with lots of stuff happen as it does happens to us. And when I was dealing with that as simply being human, without the being part of me, or as one of my other mentors, Bar Patterson says, she says, we're both and we're both human with a body. The body allows for this formless energy and this consciousness to show up through it. So we need a body, but when we're both human and being, when we're both form and formless, when we're both and, that's when we're truly whole. And no matter what happens to, as we said, the body, and that can be illness, that can be anything. We can be hurt or injured or, you know, that's why we wear seatbelts and wear masks yeah. and wear masks and you know, we don't run with knives. I mean, yeah, but the formless nature of us, the infinite nature of us shows up through us, through our perfect, unique, beautiful, individual essence, coloring, whatever you would want to say, Anna Scott form, Fiona Jacob form, which is perfect for this world. But if we hone ourselves to the smallness of the just being human and kind of 
ducking and diving the blows of life. You could say what we're here to steward or midwife or bring into being doesn't get that opportunity. Yeah. Because we're playing human small as opposed to whole infinite. Yeah, it seems like if we don't, what, what I'm seeing with what you're saying, V, is that we don't know that we have the safety net, the spiritual, beautiful, perfect that's supporting us, that's holding us. We just think we're the human body. Yeah. You don't know there's an and. Yeah, or I think we do know it at a certain level. Sometimes we get that sense of it, but we don't know what it is. We don't know how to get back to it. And we think that it's a fluke. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, yeah, it's like, oh, you know, I, if I was in flow today. Well, and then we create a seven step process to get to flow as opposed to no, I am flow when I'm not yeah. caught up in my, I don't know, overthinking mind, intellectual mind. Again, nothing wrong with having an intellectual mind, beautiful part of who we are, but it's when it's the right tool for the job. Mm -hmm. when, when we're looking to be love, be presence in the world, to create, to experience deep, moving gratitude, to create impact in the world, that just comes from this spiritual nature, this impersonal spiritual nature we are. Sorry, I'm laughing. <laughs> you laugh, girl. I love it. No, because you just spoke a truth, but what I just saw is that we're all working so hard to be impressive and great and love and blah blah blah. And what I just felt is like it's who we are. Just relax. Take a chance. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let you be you, but all of you. Oh my God, it's so rad. I mean, every time I hear this, it's so radical, but it's so true and simple. Like we are this, but we're trying to be it. And the more we try to be it, the further we get away from it. Well, we're trying to maneuver it into a way that we think people will like. Mm. Say more. Well, I've spent many years of my life with thinking about and loving mentors in my life and teachers in my life. And I, I want to be more like them. And waking up to the fact of there is only one Fiona Jacob, there is mm -hmm. only one Annette Scott. How the formless shows up in me, my essence, my innate nature, my quirks and eccentricities and weird accent and the way I laugh at crazy jokes and how I love <laughs> my husband and adore to say that's uniquely me and why would I not be that for god's sakes a it's the easiest thing in the world <laughs> b when I turn myself inside out like a pretzel to be other people it fell flat like a oh. souffle on a Saturday night Or maybe a Friday night. Who knows? Anyway. <laughs> it's like you know, the oven door is kind of like, oh, my God, it, it's fine. <laughs> no resuscitating that one. <laughs> and so it's, and, and this comes to me insightfully. I, I think I've had this insight maybe a thousand times. So, you know, it keeps coming to me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not done with this one yet. But it's like, oh, my God, the more that I show up as me. Mm the more and richer life flows to me and through me. Because it, it's almost like, I, I love Michael Neal when he talks about, you know, when you start a flywheel, <laughs> it takes a little bit of, you know, movement to get it to move. But then once it's in motion, it just flows. Mm. And it not only flows through, but it kind of flows to us too we kind of show up energetically different in the world somehow. And when we show up energetically different in the world, people, life 
cats and dogs, <laughs> horses show, you know, show up yeah. energy different with us. The image I have right now is the more you become you, the brighter your light becomes. Oh, what a beautiful way of saying it. That's perfect, Anna. Exactly that. There is less obscurity. There's less opaqueness in front of that impersonal, infinite light and consciousness we are. Yeah, and what I just saw was that it like what it reminds me. I mean, I know we've heard this, but I was thinking about a diamond. Yeah. And how they're all cut so uniquely. Yeah. Each stone, but it's like the way the light shines through it is unique to it. But beautiful, just unique, or like a snowflake, unique. Yeah. But what I love about what you're saying, and I think it's just so vital that we see this too, is when we know we are this infinite, unique potential and possibility in the world, this unique essence that we are, we stop the comparison. Mm. And oh my God, how much energy does it take off our mind when we stop comparing ourselves to others? Because there will never be any other Anna Scott like you. <laughs> but the, again, the next image I have is, is, um, is like you're trying to walk, but you've got sandbags tied around your waist. Like <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't know why that image came up, but that's the one. And, and what I see you're pointing to for people is to see that they're unique. And the minute they stop judging a mind without judgment, it's like the sandbags come off and you can move through life freer, easier. And the image that I have when you said that, Anna, it's then we rise. Oh. It's, like, it's like when you throw the sandbags out of an, you know, a, an air balloon. Yeah. It rises because it can't but. That means we rise in the world. Our beauty, our uniqueness, our creations, our stewardship, our love, our hmm. possibility, hope, relationships. And practically, too, I mean, if it's a program or a coaching or, a, <laughs> or you know, with your children or your husband or your wife, when we're that we waken them up to that within them too. Mm. Oh, Fee. You're like, a, it's like taking a hot bath talking to you, a nice warm hot bubble bath. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, not leaving you with red skin, Anna, that would not be a good thing. <laughs> well, the lotion, you know, the bubble yeah. bath. Yeah, you're getting nourished from the inside, so you're good, you're good. <laughs> but I just see that, I, I love what you're pointing people to. I mean, I, I, I think that this is where we're similar is we both just want to remind people who, we, who they really are. Because once they see it, it seems to take care of everything. It, it, it really, and again, I'm just going to speak from experience. I've had 45 years without understanding this. I have had 10 years with a moving and shifting understanding of this. I have fallen more deeply in love with life and with myself. And even more beautiful for me, I think, I'm not sure if these are top one and top two, but the experience of freedom to be, the freedom to create, just the freedom to be me has taken so much off my mind and my heart. It's like it's changed, you know, to quote one of our mentors, Michael Neal, it's it, it, nothing's changed on the outside, but everything's different. Yeah. We walk in a different world. 
And we create from a completely different place, an infinite eternal source of power and creation. And that's, there's no greater gift. There is no greater gift Mm -hmm. than knowing that to be true. God, it's beautiful, Fee. You wear it. What's the word? What it feels like, you know, a straight jacket. Most people mm-hmm. are walking around in a straight jacket of their thinking. Yeah. And you see the truth of it. So there's no straight jacket. And the truth is there never is a straight jacket. It just yeah. feels like I agree. I can't believe this. This has been the fastest 30 minutes ever. <laughs> I don't believe, are we, seriously? Oh my God. Yeah, like, I'm like, oh my God. Okay, Sophie, how do people find you? Where do they look you up? It'll all be in the bio, but right now, where do they find you? Because I want them to find you. Well, I love this bit because I have to, to my chagrin, say I have not got a website. <laughs> oh, that's right. You know, this is where it proves you don't need a website when you're, you're as good as you are. So where people can find me, and I love when people reach out and say hi, by the way. So you will find me in LinkedIn. If you just type in the name Fiona Jacob, you will get me there. You will see all of the shit I have written down about my life, which is <laughs> gorgeous. And it, some of it is very interesting. And some of it's just, you know, life. So I would love if people are interested in just saying hi to say hi. Perfect. Perfect. We'll make sure that it's in there. And I can't thank you enough so much. You are so, I've loved this conversation, Anna. We need to do this more often. I agree. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you, beauty. You're welcome, beauty.